Ari Aster pranks viewers with a surprise screening of Bo is Afraid. Star Wars Skeleton Crew recruits Oscar-winning directors. And Marvel reveals their secret invasion trailer with a brand new release date. In our weekly review on the Big Suck Session. <laughs> All this and more on this week's episode of Freeze Frame. Welcome back to Freeze Frame, brought to you by Strictly Casual, the show where we stop to take a moment to discuss all the heavily talked about news of the week having to do with movies, TV, streaming, and pop culture. My name is Vincent DeSantis. Today, I'm joined by, as always, writer Maldonado Baby. Welcome, everybody, to episode 105. What is 105 <laughs> in Spanish? Um. Oh, man. Oh, se siente? I want to know. Se siente? Dang, you lost me, bro. I died. Okay, I, I well, went up 105 to 40 in Spanish class, and that was it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this, or listening to this podcast. If you're listening on audio platforms, please go on over to YouTube, to youtube.com slash strictly casual, and uh, find us there uh, as well. If you're on YouTube watching this, please go over to audio platforms and subscribe. This helps us out a bunch. Obviously, we have all the social medias you want to keep up with. We have interviews out this week, which is the big thing we want to talk about. Is uh, We had an interview come out yesterday of Aaron LaPlante at WonderCon, who is the voice in Resident Evil Village of the Duke. He's also the main character Spear in Primal, and he's in Bleach and a couple other really cool stuff that we talked to him about. Uh, and that full video is live on our YouTube as well as we're going to be chopping it up into little shorts for uh, social media as well that you're going to be able to check out. And uh, yeah. That's kind of all that's going on right now on the channel. Keep in. Uh, there's going to be a couple more interviews throughout the week as well that we're just kind of sprinkling between our regular scheduled, regularly scheduled content. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, I am. Before we get started, Vince, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm okay, mm -hmm. dude. I'm okay. I'm. La I'm glad last week's behind me. I feel like mm -hmm. last week was just a lot, a lot going on. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's like, not that it's a slower week this week, but it's less things. And yeah, I, I'm happy yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, and then this weekend, I am headed back up to the Bay Area for Easter. It'll be a 24-hour trip, driving up and then driving driving wow. up Saturday morning, driving back Saturday or Sunday afternoon. So, wow, okay. Okay, at least, okay. Sleep there. Sleep there. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? It's been okay. It's been, it's been great. It's been really fun. Um, mm -hmm. I think, like, like you said, for me, I have a paper, a school paper, so that's the only thing occupying sure, my time. Sure. But yeah, it's pretty light. Uh, I just finished Resident Evil 4. Oh, nice. baby. You know me and my Resident Evil franchise. I'm, I feel like I'm on checkpoint. Yeah. It's like I could talk about Resident Evil all day. But I, I played the demo. It was pretty fun. It's good, dude. It's, it's, it's You know what? Oh, here. Okay, so I saw a review from uh, Blessing Adeode Jr. from Kind of Funny. Mm -hmm. um, and he described it perfectly as it's like an escape room. And I think that's why I like those games because they mm. are kind of like escape rooms. You get a key. It takes sure. you to a room. Got to find the card, you know, the letter, the card, this, this, this yeah. and that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's I funny. had fun with that. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to more events and more fun stuff that we get to do, you know? Cool, cool, cool. Just I cooking it. it. Um, last night. Here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> last night, Succession, season four, episode two, oh. uh, released. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't watch this one on the dot, like, right when it came out or anything. But I watched it uh, before I went to bed. Um as you should. Now, you should I don't want to really. That. I don't want to go into spoilers. It's been like it hasn't even been out a day. Like it's been out oh, hours okay. at this point. So I don't think it's worth spoiling. But talk a little bit about how you're feeling about this final season of Succession because we didn't really talk about mm -hmm. it last week um, for the pilot. So I guess the last oh, two yeah. episodes is just how you've been enjoying it. I think it's crazy that you know this show is so well written. It's you know it's very dialogue heavy. Not much happens like action wise. It's mainly just learning character motivations through what they're saying you know and their their lines are so well i think what's up? i would yeah. push back to say that there's a lot of action oh, it's really? not okay, violence yeah. it's it, but it, yeah. it's like this show does not waste a single second of its That's runtime. True. like the pacing is there's things happening yeah, yeah. you're right you know you're right you're right you're right, you're right. Yeah, there is a lot of action because of of the conflict that's going on right so there is kind of a lot going on of, in that sense yeah i guess yeah, like, like, but what I enjoy too is what I mean is like they're sitting in a room and the whole episode was kind of them in a room. And I was like, wow, this is like, I guess Every someone, yeah, yeah, you could see them kind of doing nothing. But this is so, it's so, there's so much tension and there's so much conflict in just these dialogue with their dynamic with each other. And right. like, that's what makes it one of the, the best shows. But um, yeah, this, this episode I think was one of the best because everything from the previous seasons was kind of brought up in a little sense and in a little way 
um, you sure. know, kind of called back. And it's like, man, these people are horrible people. Also, you're siding with people. You're not siding right. with them. You're like, wow, these people are finally getting what they deserve. They're, I, there's a lot going on of, I don't know. How, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's good too. I don't know if it was one of the like best for me episodes. Mm-hmm. I, I, my roommate's starting it from the beginning, so I'm mm-hmm. kind of like watching it along with him a little bit. And they just got, he got to the Thanksgiving episode in the first season oh, where yeah. Greg has to shred all the papers of, of the cruises and stuff. Incredible episode, like so good. So I, w- I was comparing it against like that being probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, at the end of the second episode of season four, uh, there's a emotional shift kind of in this episode mm-hmm. where there's not a lot of emotions in the show uh-huh. towards each other. Like any sort of like, okay, here's the thing about succession in all the seasons is like the show doesn't work unless the family actually likes each other a little bit, even though they don't show it, they have to, they have to like, yeah, you know that the dad loves mm-hmm. the kids, mm-hmm. but he never, he's never going to say it. He's yeah. never going to say it. He, the kids know that they, they love their dad. Yeah. But they're not going to say it. They're yeah. not going to say it. And it's not, and there's this like emotional shift where there's conversations of like empathy that some mm-hmm. of the characters are having, which we haven't seen at all mm-hmm. in the show in like, yeah. you know, 35 ish hours of TV, like mm-hmm. no, no emotion like that. So I think this is whether or not it's um, truthfully coming from the character, like if the character's saying it truthfully or just saying it to sh- mm. make a deal or make yeah. a show as we've seen. <laughs> so many motivations. I think regardless of that, we have like Connor being mm-hmm. like the emotional anchor of this episode, mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. being really vulnerable. And uh, it's just really good. Mm-hmm. Every single week of Succession is really good. There's, yeah. there's not a bad episode of Succession. Yeah. Even Roman this season has taken a complete yeah. shift i don't know if I, i'm starting to watch well i mean i've always watched the behind the scenes where the creator oh yeah i didn't see that uh, it was cool so they talked a lot about roman on how he he's kind of matured this he's like you he's always been kind of the wild you know wild loose cannon kind of with what he says he's very raw and very unfiltered but this mm-hmm. episode really showed him as like you know even the first two episodes of this season he's very much like trying to be serious and trying to trying to yeah. you know stay away from conflict and mm-hmm. But try out of business, you know, <laughs> but now, you know, the siblings, they're so pent, they have so much pent up aggression and anger from their childhoods that they, yeah. you know, they, 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 they go a certain way. They make certain decisions that Roman is like, what is going like? No, you know, but right. Another thing I love about these guys is that there are, there's four adults and I, I'm an only child, but for some reason, I feel like some siblings that they're so good at playing siblings. Right. And this is from viewing my family of with mm. siblings and stuff like that. Like they're so good at being childish. These are adults, but they act like kids. I don't know if like mm. you get that yeah. vibe of like, dude, that is what a, like a teenage boy would do <laughs> or a teenage right. girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, but they're grown adults. But they're like, Papa, hey, Papa, can I can I text you, Daddy? Like, Daddy, yeah. blah blah blah's doing this. Like, it's literally childish right. stuff. But they're you know adults and billionaires, and it's just it's so weird because yeah, I don't know. It's polar opposite, but it's like these guys are so childish, dude. It's, it's crazy. pretty funny. I yeah I can't say enough praise about this show. Like if you're not watching it, you should definitely hop on it. Yeah. Uh, it's not too late. I like yeah, it's not, not too late. late. <laughs> hop on, it's, yeah, binge yeah. it. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. We'll, we'll keep talking about it because you know uh, I'm excited to talk spoilers and more. Just you know dive into it. For sure, yeah. At the end, especially with, dude. I, I just I, I wonder how this show's gonna end. I mean, oh I yeah I got my guesses. I got my Ooh-hoo. guesses. Okay, okay. Uh, moving on, we got some new trailers. I thought I pointed, you know, this, we get trailers all the time, but uh, it seems like it's going to be a busier week than usual when it comes to trailers. Asteroid City just recently came out. Wes Anderson's new film, um, Secret Invasion, just came out yesterday, um, which we'll talk about a little later. And then new Barbie trailer is apparently coming out this week. That's kind of the rumor mill. And then first uh, Barbie trailer, the fir- yeah, the first first Barbie right? official trailer. Well, there's a teaser, but it's you know this is the first official one oh. for sure. Um, Spider Verse is coming out Tuesday. I thought that was going to be today. Yeah. Excuse me. And then uh, Blue Beetle is coming out today, so be on the lookout. People are really excited for, about that online versus Hispanic Hero, DC though. So sure, <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, I think you and One Take News are the only people on my timeline that were like posting about. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of gifts. Um, they, they're already making gifts about the Blue Beetle. 
He's like, sure. they show him getting the suit. But yeah. I secured the bag, dude. Cobra Kai and now Superhero. Honestly, dude. Good for like, him. I like it, him. He's a cool... What a, I, what I don't know job. how to say his name. What do you, how do you say it? I'll say Zolo. Oh, Zolo. Ma Kaido. Mara Duen. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know his last name. Then. I don't know his last name. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Cool guy. Like him. No, yeah, uh, okay, great. let's talk about Asteroid City trailer. I'm so freaking yeah. stoked for this. Wes Anderson, mm. uh, we've been hearing about this for a while. We've been hearing about the cast that keeps on coming on, kind of like whisperings of what it would be about, but not really anything solid. Um, we knew it was going to take place in like a small town in the desert. That's about it. But now we see this trailer, and there's aliens, and there's, uh, mm. I don't know, Scott Jansen, and we have uh, Jason Schwartzman. The cast is insane. It looks gorgeous. It looks just like oh, Wes Anderson. Yeah. Like, Return, not return to form, but like you watch it and you're like, I'm back, I'm back, baby. Yeah, Strap right. me into these seats, I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, it's yeah, just good to be in the community, you know what I mean? Like the Wes Anderson sure. fandom. I'm like, yes, I'm in it now, you know, because you know, these it's movies will so come nice. out, right? And people, you know, you would get excited, people would get excited, and be like, oh, yeah, okay, I don't, I don't know, I don't know this director, I don't know the movies, but now, sure, having seen now you're watching all of them, yeah, damn near all his films, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> It's, it's great dude it's yeah. so special it's a treat it's an absolute treat Honestly. that we have a wes anderson movie this year and um, possibly two if the animation comes oh, out at the yeah. end of the year like they're talking about <laughs> oh yeah true true uh let's see as far as imdb goes it says for the synopsis this is brief the itinerary of a junior stargazer convention is pr spectacularly disrupted by world-changing events and yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty world-changing but <laughs> sounds perfect Oh yeah, the cast is stacked. I think Scarlett Johansson is kind of a new newcomer to Wes Anderson, but of course the you know Jason Schwartzman, Edward Norton. Um, she, I I don't think she's been in his films. I yeah, just right. so I just saw kind Moonrise Kingdom, and then I just saw Grand Budapest Hotel. So was, okay. that was my homework. So we'll talk about that. What are your favorites? Uh, favorite Wes Anderson movies here? Give me top two. I got my I got my letterbox list, and I think it might oh, be you pretty, sh him. pretty shocking. Um, okay. I saw yeah, some people yeah. talking about him, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm starting him. My number one might be surprising. It's the Dur Dursling Limited. Oh, the Darjeeling Limited. Yeah, Darjeeling yeah, yeah. Limited. And number two uh -huh. is Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Yeah, that's what I'm talking um, about. Three World Tenon Bombs, four Grand Budapest. And then I'll say five is Fantastic Mr. Fox. Beautiful. And then you see Isle of Dogs yet? No, no, no. Oh, no, you no, don't no, like no. Moonrise? Moonrise at the bottom? No, no, no. you don't like it, but well, it's just in comparison. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just at the bottom. Because, yeah. I mean, man, those other ones. Cause like, I know. Surface level, I think, like, for example, Darjeeling Limited, people will be like, eh, it's okay, right? But Moonrise and Fantastic Mr. Fox are, like, better, let's say, quality. But no. Darjeeling has a lot of interesting themes. The Darjeeling, like, oh. Dude, yeah. there's so much in that film, and it's like, yeah, you know, taking a four-hour class and you break down every little minute detail, that it's movie great. becomes number one <laughs> for yeah. me. It's good. I would put like Grand Budapest at number one for me, and then mm -hmm. Life Aquatic is number two. So good. I love Life Aquatic. <laughs> it's so funny, man. Yeah, um, makes me so happy. But, but yeah, uh, go check out that Asteroid City trailer. That'll premiere uh, at. I think we talked mm -hmm. that it would premiere at Cannes this year. So. Uh, sure we'll get some chatter about how it is then and uh yeah we need some press oh, matches to can dude oh my god one <laughs> day can imagine oh my do you know i think at the bottom though of most of what's mm -hmm. interesting for me though is french dispatch because that oh, one i really I liked hear, i hear about that yeah but there's like i like one of the stories in there and then mm -hmm. the two of the stories i'm just eh, eh on and i don't know if i like the small stories in a movie sort of deal. I don't oh, know. I have to do a project on like my next presentation is on that film. So on I have, French Dispatch. Yeah, and I have to see it. I haven't seen it, so I mean, you I'm might nervous. love it. I, there's there a lot of people love it. I, it's not that I dislike it. I think it's like an eight out of ten. No, I just yeah. think on the, just, on the Wes think, Anderson scale, it's yeah, lower. yeah, because he's done so much good stuff. So yeah, yeah. William Defoe's really good, and Jeffrey Wright in French Dispatch. Oh, oh my god, he's so good. Best okay. narrator ever. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Man, so I'm excited. Good. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I am cautious for that one. Okay, let's jump into Secret Invasion trailer that I just watched no less than 15 minutes ago before yeah. the start of the show, 20 minutes ago. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you think. So one of the major concerns that we both had uh, was talking about when it comes to the scroll story in the comics. It was like, oh man, I hope that they don't retcon some amazing moments from the MCU. And I come. This was. Yeah, you go. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> you're good, you're good. 
I, I come to realize that, you know, hearing about the story and then even seeing this trailer, it's like, no, they're not going to follow that storyline. Scrolls are just bad guys. Uh, it's a Nick Fury kind of focused story. And it's very much like these guys are, you know, they, they're shapeshifters, of course. So, like, you could see Rhodey is a scroll, right? But but the real Rhodey is somewhere else. And they're just disguising. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they're going to retcon and say that these people were scrolls. Oh, that was in the trailer? I didn't even see it. No, I'm just making oh, okay. theories. Like, like, we could see, see no, someone. Yeah. Yes. I think that that is the worst part of like the pitch of this show to me. Like when people told me like, oh, this is we're going to see surprises like characters that weren't actually mm -hmm. their characters in the movies. I'm like, this sounds yeah, let me terrible. I, this sounds I explain so that bad. wrong. No, I'm with yeah, you. No, I'm it, with you. I mean, I mean, no, like okay. for probably like a one episode thing. You know what I mean? Like Rhodey has always sure. been Rhodey right through the MCU. But let's say one episode where he's talking to him and then he turns into a scroll. It's like, oh, my God, right. you can't trust anybody. But sure. Rhodey is still alive somewhere else. He's not. He yes. is not a scroll, which is more of exciting of an idea because after I see yeah. this trailer, I think the tone is what I like yeah. out of Marvel. But I'm and with less you. Of, I'm, I'm like, and less of the, oh, you just punched that guy like style. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, even though I think Marvel does has some good comedy and it doesn't like. Mm -hmm. I think it gets rolled over by some of the, yeah. eh, comedy that has yeah. been sprinkled in through mm -hmm. there. Uh, I like this tone a lot. This is like what I enjoy mm -hmm. more. Uh, and it looks very much a winter soldiery in the sense mm -hmm. of like, you don't know who the Hydra agents are. And yeah, this dude. would be, you don't know who the scrolls mm -hmm. are. Same type and, vibe. Uh, I like my crime thrillers and my mm -hmm. special agent uh, movies and such. Yeah. So I think this could be great i hope this is an andor situation where i'm like this is gonna yeah. be stupid and then it's the best thing ever so. i know they, they have a chance dude like like it's yeah. like i i want this project to be so so good because we got maria hills coming back martin freeman as um the agent right we saw him last sure. in black panther um even um oh yeah ben, that was it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little you know a little brief it turns out he was married yeah. to valentino de fontaine so yeah, that's crazy there could be some thunderbolts connection there was also a little mention I'm of sure there will. the avengers are gone and it's like oh my god finally are we going to like i know it's probably gonna be delays and marvel's gonna be completely shifted so i'm sure they don't have the plan yet but uh -huh. we could see a potential ending where nick fury is like hmm maybe we do need to get the avengers again right i need I to reassemble yeah. a team <laughs> exactly and like, then what come on. young avengers like what what's next oh Not yet. You no, know they're what? not doing Young Avengers. Maybe this could lead into Thunderbolts, actually. I know they said this is going to connect oh, to yeah. Armor Wars with Rhodey. This, like, Armor Wars will be the fallout of this show. Which is a movie now, not a show. Oh, that's right. It is a I movie. I really switched that. Yeah, that's a movie. Okay. That's cool. So I wonder if that, that plan's changed. Oh, really God, I know. In? Who knows, dude? It, Who knows? They, they do so much shifts, but, yeah, there's some potential here. Look, like, again, I love speculating about connections to the future, but, yeah, about this show alone... I think that there's, I, I, I think the stakes are going to be low. Like, I don't think it's going to be world changing. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't like, care about connections anymore. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want there, I like, yeah. obviously there's going to be. I want the show to be great. I want this show to be good. Be, but yeah, it, it, I won't remember anything about the connections if this is like, if I'm pulling teeth to watch each episode each week, you know? <sighs> Like, I hope it's not boring. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's just, it could be. It's not gonna be it doesn't look boring, mm -hmm. at least. Because, like, Falcon and the Winter Soldier probably is the closest kind of connection to vibe, I would think. And it's kind of like, uh, okay. I mean, Falcon and the Winter Soldier had some great moments, and then they also had yeah. the Flag Smashers. That was tough. There you go. See, so yeah. it's, you win some, you lose some. So I yeah. hope that it's... And, and again, they have an opportunity with their scrolls to their villains, right? Could be stronger. They could be really right. strong. Totally. We'll have to see. We'll wait and see. <laughs> we will wait and see. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this little surprise screening that happened just <laughs> yesterday. Frank, uh, or is yesterday? April first was yesterday. Two days ago. Two days ago. Wow, is it? Th is it the third? Wow. Wild. Dave comes out tomorrow. Oh. I can't wait to watch Dave. Hi, I'm Dave. It's gonna be Hi, so I'm good. Dave. Okay. We'll get to Dave later. Anyways, yeah. Ari Aster pranks viewers with a surprise screening of Bo is Afraid. This comes from Mashable. Weird website to get this on. Uh, yeah. On Saturday, fans have or, or fans arrived at the Alamo Draft House in New York City. And uh, also, uh, this happened in San Francisco, I believe, as well. So two different theaters. Uh, 
fit, but this one specifically, New York City, anticipating a director's cut of Ari Aster's Midsummer with a special extended trailer for Bo is Afraid. But, alas, alas, they were tricked. A loss. <laughs> Instead, the audience was greeted by Aster and Joaquin Phoenix and treated to a surprise screening of Aster's latest film, Bo is Afraid. The A24 film follows a very paranoid Boo or Bo uh, in an eccentric journey to visit his mother. It isn't due in theaters until April 21st. Wow, that's actually pretty soon. Making yeah. Saturday's diehard Midsummer fans the first general audience to watch the film. After the nearly three hour long screening, Aster returned for a QA moderated by Emma Stone. Pretty <laughs> random. Where she what? asked. Are you okay, man? <laughs> because the movie's just so weird. That's both intriguing and and amazing. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Will you watch this with me? Oh, I was just about to say, but <laughs> if you really want to see this, I will, I will muster be... up the courage to go see it. Okay, here's what I was gonna say when I'm gonna watch to Ari Aster. This. It's one of those things where it's like, um, it's like, look, steak is so good, so many people love it, but it's not for me. <laughs> You don't like steak, Ryder? No, I'm, I mean, I don't know. Just... There's a bad analogy. I don't. I Did didn't... you watch? <laughs> I think I'm always disturbed and something like it freaks me changes out, inside of me afterwards. Yeah. Like, like Hereditary like, was scary, but like, I don't know. There's something about that that didn't click with me that clicks with other people. Midsummer <laughs> clicked with me 100%, and I was so scared for days after that movie. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want that, though. See, that's the thing. When I saw this trailer, I was like, there's some moments in this that I'm like, dude, I feel like a weight is going to be added on my shoulders. And I don't dude, want that for a week. And but Have you great. watched Midsummer? No. <laughs> I'm afraid to watch that one, dude. I wanted to throw clips. up for days. Oh, that's for that's days so after good. After I wanted to throw up. That is so, not the feeling I want. I want the high after watching John Wick. I don't want no, I feel like I'm going to throw up for a week. I, uh, I can't wait for Bo is Afraid because it's not a horror movie, he said. Exactly. It's a uh, nightmare something. A psychological <laughs> nightmare, dude. It's just a psychological. I can't wait. I don't know uh, what it's going to be. I'm just, I'm open to experiencing here. whatever it is. I got to be a part of the conversation around Bo is Afraid, so I got to watch the movie, you know? You're right, That's you're right. And, and it is like... I don't know. Another thing about his films is that sometimes, well, mine is Tony Collette, and please correct me for this. Every time I watch his movies, I'm like, oh, they're always unknowns or they're always smaller people. Mine is Florence Pugh mm. too, but they're like, like, like you can t- you could tell it's real. But with this, it's it's Joaquin, so it feels more like a movie. But like with Hereditary, man, I took it so seriously. It was like watching a documentary. I was like, oh god. <laughs> well, I, okay, I would say Hereditary is a weird, weird scarier story, yeah. on paper than. Midsummer, but Midsummer's more disturbing to me. Like I just thought about a scene from it. Oh God, I almost threw up thinking about the head. It. No, the, the the cake and the drink. Oh God, yeah. Uh, Pretty oh good my time. God, I was gagged, dude. I okay. mean, the opening of Midsummer has been scarred in my head as like dark, just so dark. I'll watch I, it with you. Oh God. Okay, I'll go. I'll I'm go through this stuff. Midsummer I'll, screening. This comes out April twenty first. Yeah, we got some time. I got some time to mentally prepare. <laughs> Before it gets this mental pap smear, dude, I'm I'm ready. Here we go. Mental pap smear, <laughs> gross. God, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, so pretty crazy. I, I hope. I mean, I'm glad some of the chatter is pretty good around this. No, oh, yeah, that's a good sign. Most of it. All right, clip time, baby. Let's go. Oh, here we go. I'll intro and throw it to you, right? Yeah, here we go. go. In three, two, one. Star Wars Skeleton Crew enlists David Lowry, the Green Knight, among other series directors. Ryder, what do we got? This is exciting stuff. We have uh, some new directors that are attached to this project, as, as well as the Daniels, which are Oscar award-winning <laughs> directors. Um, for those of you that don't know Skeleton Crew, this is from Lucasfilm, a little summary. It tells the story of four kids who find themselves lost in the vastness of the galaxy, trying to find their way home. Um, we have uh, some report here from The Hollywood Reporter and One Tech News. Um, it was recently announced that Lowry will be re- reuniting with A24 to write and direct the music drama Mother Mary. Um, he's, he's also with Disney doing P- uh, Peter Pan and Wendy. Um, but yeah, this is the latest show from John Favreau and Dave Filoni in the so-called Mandoverse. <laughs> Mandoverse? That's yeah, what they're calling this? Yeah, I wonder if that's... that. I don't, hey, one tick news. Is that just like something he, he put or if that's... 
what they're I have no clue. playing in. I wonder, right? <laughs> Let us know. Is this during... I didn't even know this show was during the same time period as Mandalorian and Ahsoka. But of course it is. Why wouldn't they? Dave wants to put his characters in everything. God bless him. <laughs> right? Know? True. Yeah. It's like, how can I put Rebels or, you know, Clone Wars? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what time frame this is, though, for sure. So this oh, actually... Go. The right. Daniels got a lot of flack uh, for when they're... It got announced that their episode came out because mm-hmm. they're like, oh... Why why are you guys doing this when you have the name and the recognition to do anything? Like, why would <laughs> yeah, you just do a God. Star Wars? They're like, this was before the Daniels kind of stood up for themselves. Yeah. And they were like, this is before everything everywhere like was even yeah. nominated for anything or was even publicly received well. They're uh-huh. like, we gotta eat just as much as you guys when we get the Star <laughs> right? Wars call. We're doing we're taking the Star Wars, what? something like yeah. that. I thought it was so funny. Um pretty hilarious. I I don't know about this show. We have Jude Law at the at the center of the show. We, we don't, don't know, know any much. of the other cast yeah. members or anything. Uh, is this expected this year for this show? I don't think it's expected this year. I think Ahsoka is kind of first on the priority list right now. I think well, sure, another yeah. thing too, Star Wars Celebration is in a week or two. So we're going to be getting oh, trailers, sure. news, and, and details. Um, this series I think apparently... we get a teaser. Yeah. A trailer for this. Probably. No, yeah, good point. Because the series wrapped production in recent months. From Hollywood Report, so it's already so it's been uh, done a while. It's been done. They already cooked it, but, you know. I mean, this kind of makes sense for where Star Wars at right now. Is they've we don't have a timeline. We don't we don't yeah. know anything about it. We just we know that we don't know any movies coming out in the future. All we know is we're getting mm-hmm. Mandalorian right now. We're getting Ahsoka at some point this mm-hmm. year. Uh, we're getting the Children's High Republic show. We have Acolyte sometime. But like these are just the, the shows, which yeah, I know like that is their premium content that they're building towards but like the primary wh- what meat, is next the meat and potatoes yeah are the films you're right because these aren't like filler stories this is their main this is their mm-hmm. main juice right now mm-hmm. but what's what's next i guess what's after that yeah. where do you go with star wars because mm-hmm. you can only these time periods we've explored so much i guess <laughs> yeah now, now yeah, with the yeah. animated shows and the live mm-hmm. action shows like we're gonna have a lot i'm still i'm so excited for ahsoka and all that uh-huh. but but what will what will that next chunk of focus be on will it be Old Republic, High Republic, will it be post-sequel? Like, what are we going to do? Because we could get more movies that are just in between, which is mm-hmm. fine. But, like, what's the new era of Star Wars? Because it's it's going to be about time to, to figure that out of where we're going to live. Okay, on the spot question, would you rather go real quick like um, like Old Republic, like those CG trailers from the video game like we've seen, like an era for, the, for a movie like that, or like 200 years in the future, like way, way, way post-Skywalker and everything? Past or future? Um, I want, I want before. I don't know if I want old Republic. I want High Republic. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I obviously they have that book initiative happening right now in the comic books, so it's like there's a ton of content coming out on High Republic, yeah. but it it really is only for only people that read. You mm-hmm. know, if if you're not reading, you're not knowing the stories, yeah, and there's a lot of good stories. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be those stories that get adapted into movies and mm-hmm. shows or whatever. I make something else. It's fine. They they've built some. They've built like Death Star levels of like threats, set pieces. Oh yeah, I guess. yeah, and threats. Like, why can't it affect other people as much as the people in the books? Oh. I'm sure. Oh, so nice. there's things that there's stories like I don't know. There's there's so much I could get into it, but I mean, Starlight Beacon is like this giant peacekeeping ship that they've built for so long, and it's like peace among the galaxy, and I like that could be such a prime like wow. thing to center your movie around is is that and mm-hmm. I, I don't know there's so much to and, do. and we've known um, star wars to kind of take source material and and adapt like i don't know i mean yeah original stuff is 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 likely but like you said you know there's so many books that that could that's that's very likely or, too here's what i think i don't think they're gonna follow the books uh-huh. but they're gonna take some key characters out of the books that uh, are like really stand out yeah, like yeah. there's some there's some great characters that would translate very well to movies and i think they could just put them in a new story and that have be the lead of the trilogy or whatever they do it's exciting here we go you heard it here first kathleen kennedy is going to be on the stage she's going to slap up a couple of those you know cover book characters and say it's taika watiti come on out <laughs> maybe cool star wars celebration i hope we get a movie announcement honestly yeah because uh, we've had plenty of news reports of this person is directing this trilogy yeah. of Star Wars movies. And then it's like, ah, they're not. Oh, these people pulled out. Dungeon Dragons people, not anymore. Yeah. James Gunn, not anymore. Taika, maybe. Ryan Johnson? Is it like, who? Who's yeah, Ryan Johnson. What? Like, we'll find out. Thank God. A lot of Star Wars stuff up in the air. Mm-hmm. Very excited for, um, oh, 
yeah, with the way Mando season three is going, I know you're loving it. I know you're loving no, it, yeah. but I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, right, there guys. you have it. Ladies and gents, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for more details on Star Wars news. And, of course, you can check out. This is uh, the clip from Freeze Frame. If you guys want to check out the full YouTube video podcast, that's, uh, you can become a member to watch the full video. Or if you're listening at home, uh, we have audio platforms for you to listen to everywhere you listen to your podcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Nice job, right? You killed it. You <laughs> bodied that. That was the first. I was like, "Oh, why did I, I've never, I've never taken this." I was like, "Oh God, you did good." Freaking out. Here. Okay, you did great. All right. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I can still talk about Star Wars, man. There's like, gosh. But, but we, so where were we going at with Mando? Like, I don't know. Wait, like, I'm excited to see what's next because of where you're at with Mando, I right? Am, or no, no, I'm excited to see where we're at, mm -hmm. like with projects that are oh yeah starting yeah. and happening i think a focus can be exciting mm -hmm. i i started i finished the first season of rebels now i have three more seasons oh. to go but i'm getting through it getting through wow it. Yeah. um great incredible background show i was watching it while i was working on the strictly casual website and mm -hmm. i was like you know just on there yeah yeah i watched like four episodes five episodes in a row i was like this is hype this is pretty good um, i'm glad yeah that's great uh but i'm not excited because i don't i I don't love Mandalorian, mm -hmm. like the story. That's totally uh, fine. It. Yeah. But so I'm <laughs> hoping that Ahsoka is more uh, focused, maybe, yeah. or have a, has a direction linear, that's maybe. Of, I like, guess. like, yeah. I just want to know why. Like, through, yeah. Mando, I don't know why. I'm also mm -hmm. two episodes behind. So, like, give me a why for Ahsoka at the very beginning. Like, why? Why are we even? Yeah. Here, Why are we here, with her character? Why are we with the rebels? Here's like a here's like a good and a bad thing with this last episode. They were like, you know what? I don't know about this. It feels like something's coming. So it was kind of blatantly obvious where they're going, but also it was weird how they executed that. It's like, okay, did yeah. we have to deliver in that way? So I don't know how you'll like sure. that delivery of sense of story, because <laughs> because it's very clear now, right? Because they were they were like the whole episode uh, was on like. This doesn't seem right. <laughs> so, I think tonight I'll be able to yeah. catch up on Mando. Okay. It's I have two episodes. Uh -huh. um, I have to change the battery because my headphones yeah, are about yeah. to die, and I'm not gonna be able to hear you, Ripperoni. But yeah, um, it was. I'm just going to. I'm, I'm waiting for Vince to hear me. I'm deaf. It was funny. It was funny because it's like okay, that's funny. I, I see you. I see. I, you. I saw <laughs> the clips of the of Zeb, the Rebels character, which was yeah. pretty cool. I didn't, um, I just, you know, I saw, I mean, uh, screenshots of that guy, but, but I was watching, I was like, cool. Yeah, no a idea. lot of people are excited about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh my God. Freaking out. No way. Well, you know, I follow a couple of Star Wars creators, so yeah, yeah. every time the episode goes live, I'm checking the feed, and so whenever they're like, oh my yeah. God, I'm crying, and I'm like, oh shoot, what happened? <laughs> or like, did you see Dave Filoni at that bar? Like, he was... Oh yeah, yeah. Like he's in the shot with his <laughs> with his cowboy hat, just like sitting dude. there, like looking at. It's so How funny, funny, dude. And and recently it was the the Paley Fest happened. Uh, yeah. Sad I missed we gotta, it. We gotta go that, dude. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool because you know they they focus on TV, right? Paley is I think yeah. TV only. Um, but they did a Mo Mando presentation, and Pedro was there, man. Pedro and he's everywhere, bro. All the directors. I was like, damn. They pay that guy big money, big uh. money. He'll do whatever. I love seeing those TikToks of him at a coffee shop just hanging out with Neil. Trump. I know, that here like in LA, like, oh my, God, imagine wedding in him and yeah. Neil. And you hear them talking about Dude, Last of Us 2. Like, here's the funny part. Like, the average Joe's going to walk up to Pedro and, like, just take a picture and leave. I'd be like, Neil. Neil, ah, yep, like, baby, Pedro, yep. Ah, like, like oh, Neil. Oh my God, Neil. Exactly. Dude, I yeah. was thinking the same thing, bro. That's people hilarious. were just walking by Neil. And I was like, it's like I don't know who Neil is. Like, Without that guy, Last of Us doesn't exist. Yeah, so. it's like, this is the greatest. One of the greatest video game creators, bro. Yeah, show up. Pretty show much. up. Uh, here we go. We got just a little bit of headlines. Just un poquito stuff that was, you know, on the radar. Pixar reveals the poster for Carl's Date, a new short that will be playing before the new Elemental film. This is about Carl Fredrickson from Up, um, voiced by the late oh. Ed Asner. Um, he's going he's gonna to go on a date with a lady friend. He's kind of moved on now. Yeah, isn't that wild? Oh, how wow, you feel? That's traumatic. I, I'm I don't know about I this. I didn't really. I was like, uh, okay. Um, it, Don. And oh Doug, my God. Doug is there to calm his nerves. And of course, instantly everybody was like, oh, I know where this is going. He's going to be the cutest shit. Yeah. Or like, people were like, 
he's gonna get with his dog. I don't, people were saying horrible stuff. It was weird. Of course. <laughs> Sick and disgusting. <laughs> I saw so many comments. Just I don't nasty. know. I don't know why. What it was, I think it was a disgusting film that posted, and pe- and like you know, mass majority were like, "Oh, you know where this is going." And I was like, "Why is this the consensus of like this? Where did this come from?" I don't know. Unsolicited. People are weird, bro. But yeah, poor Ellie. No, I'm just kidding. She's. I mean, it's got to move on. We have. Deadpool 3 recruiting Succession's Matthew McFadden McFa- uh, for a mystery role. Greatest film of the year. Greatest film of the decade. Did you see that because... people were posting the, the quote of like a year before when he said he'll never do oh. um, a blockbuster movie, like just any sort of blockbuster, yeah. and then he proceeded to shit on like every Super movie Hero coming film, out yeah. that year, including mm-hmm. superhero films, uh, and then now it's like, oh yeah, he'll be in Deadpool 3. It's like... Succession ended a season too early. I need to get on. He's like, I needed a bag. to buy a new car, so I just wanted to, like, you know. Yeah. On Deadpool 3. <laughs> they're like, hey, do you want to be in part of Deadpool? It's like, uh, what? what? And they're like, they'll pay you $20 million. Oh, I'm in. You know what? Here's what I'll say. <laughs> I hope uh, Matthew takes over the role as Deadpool in Deadpool 3. And oh. says goodbye, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Imagine he's a... Vi- oh, my God. He'd be... No, he'd be the most hilarious Deadpool ever. That would be insane with his voice playing like a Tom character. Is that, it'd oh, be so hello. funny. That would be great. I'm joking, of course, because I don't really think that would be good. But no, it would, it would be, be funny. Fun. Yeah, no, for sure. House of the Dragon season two will be shorter than season one. Um, it'll, It's only going to be eight episodes instead of ten. And their HBO is re- reportedly considering a season three green light. It's great. It should yeah. be. Like, it should um, be just green light. Some of the creators were saying that they're doing eight episodes only because they got the story like plotted out already that's yeah. why they're cutting it so i gonna be a, it's, it's gonna be a damn good story yeah oh it's not gonna it, it's just like succession it's not gonna waste a second like mm-hmm. these aren't 20 episode seats or oh, 20 episode right. seasons these are like it's a little movie. they're gonna be eight hour long mm-hmm. maybe longer episodes i mean the, we saw like the first episode was like hour and 20 minutes or something <laughs> right uh, yeah for a season there were a couple that were yeah, like long I, i'm not worried about length this is gonna be Every episode is going to be important, and that is that is important to me. Yeah. That is like that gives me a reason to be mm-hmm. so excited for this. So eight episodes, great. Yeah, good. I don't know what I was reading about. Like they said, they're going to do the whole story, like leading. I I know that that's we know that, but like they're yep. diving into the whole thing all the way up to the end now. Good, yeah. Which is like as oh they my should. God. So more character switches, more year gaps. Yeah, Just unfortunately, they said that there are no more flashbacks ever. So like the the young actress that played him, they're not gonna ever come back. It's okay. Is, they had a great. Yeah. They did good. Had yeah. a great beginning of the season, and I hope they are getting deals for more mm-hmm. movies and stuff right now because they did great work. I know it was only five episodes, but Man. everybody's eyes, millions of eyes were on them, and I, they should be getting great movie deals. Yeah. And show oh, deals. wild dude! <laughs> to get yeah. a job like that when you're so young, they're they were so good. They were so good. Both of them. Yep. Uh, we have Taron Egerton says him and Matthew Vaughn have every intention to make one last Kingsman film together. Ooh, very nice. Where, where's like, your heart lie with these Kingsman films? I like the first two. I haven't watched the prequel one oh. with Ray Fiennes. Oh, dude, that one's so good. Really? That I heard was... it was bad. Really? Yeah. I disagree. I think it's, okay, dude, I'll okay, say it's okay. better than, well, it's not, not better than the first. I, I mean, it's borderline better than both those Kingsman movies, dude. Okay. Cool, <laughs> it's cool, cool. solid. It's because of the Ray Rasputin one. Yeah. I, it's on my list. I like, I would like to watch it eventually, but it's like one of those, it's not high enough to where it like takes, I'm like, <sighs> I, oh yeah, I'll watch it. Really, and then I'm like, oh shoot. It's kind of in the vein of John Wick where it's so action packed, but it's so creative. The third yeah. act is yeah. like, oh my gosh, they're doing like a movie thing. They're doing like an old school movie villain fight. I don't know. It's like so good. Cool. I'm sure I'll get to it eventually. Mm-hmm. But I like the Kingsman movies. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, here we go. Dave. We got Dave coming this week. Oh, man. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. How wild. It's um, at 7 o'clock Pacific time, 10 o'clock Eastern time on FX. FX? Uh, is it releasing to Hulu? I wonder if it's coming to Hulu same time or day after. I hope so because that's how I watched it previously. Yeah. But I watched it week to week, pre- like on season two on Hulu. Oh, that's the thing because I, I don't have cable. They're thirty minute episodes. They're they're not long, right? They're short. They're short. That's what I yeah. when I you know when I watched Dave, I watched two seasons fully back to back. I mean, fully yeah. together, and that was fun. I just week to week, uh, it hurts because I'm impatient. I'm an impatient kid. <laughs> sure, it, it keeps the conversation around yeah. longer. 
So Which is good. I might wait, but then again, I probably won't because I just like watching things when they release. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of another musician that's making a show or that's made a show, have you seen Swarm? Oh, I heard about this. Me too. I really want to watch it. Interesting stuff. The whole season is barely out. I looked on Prime. Yeah. Oh, Billie Eilish. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm if... kind of interested in it. I, I don't know. It feels like they're trying to do HBO's Euphoria, or they're trying to do, like, The Idol coming up. I don't know. If it's like... Oh, does it have a gross feeling like that? Then I definitely don't want it. It kind of does. It kind of... Okay, I, don't wanna... I haven't even seen a trailer, to be honest. And this is strictly on... The aesthetic of the camera. This is nothing on the star. I don't know oh, nothing. Then, you know what I mean? It just looks well, like that. I watched an interview and uh, uh, Childish Gambino said, uh, mm-hmm. Childish Gambino. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Glover. Um, That's the Glover. He was like, yeah, I shot this entire thing on film. Everybody told yeah. me not to, but I really wanted to try it. And he's like, it was really it was really hard. Like <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it looks great. Like, cool. But yeah. it had that vibe. And I'm like, is this going to be yucky? <laughs> I don't no. think it's going to be yucky. No, yeah. But if it is, that would kill my excitement for mm-hmm. it. But anyways, I did see a those, clip it's on my list with Billie Eilish, and there was a lot of naked women around her, and I was like, "This is what's ah, going on okay. here." Okay, that's that's kind All of right. my. But I don't like I don't know I don't context, but still I was like I don't know what's going on here. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. <sighs> Who knows? Yeah. And, and last, uh, finally, oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> so no, you're good, dude. Francis Ford Coppola raps production on Megalopolis, um, which is how how did he crazy. do crazy. After reports of saying that everything went to shit on the set and everything, all this kind of stuff. But we know, based on experience, that Coppola thrives off that. Yeah. I.e. <laughs> Apocalypse Now being the worst production of all time and now being one of the best movies ever. So That's it's like, wild. yeah, I can't wait for this. Adam Driver was praising uh, certain things about it on Rap Day. And there was an announcement of a Megalopolis animation. Uh happening i was reading about this on twitter something about like a short series about someone that lives in this megalopolis this perfect city sort of thing i don't know it doesn't really seem very coppola but you know yeah that's exactly what i was gonna say and like yeah this we we know this guy his productions are just masses always right like he just always goes over budget over Schedule, right? You gotta watch The Offer. <laughs> oh, that I, I, it is on. I recommend this to everybody. It's I, like, yeah, it's so good. Miles Teller's great, and then uh, who plays Coppola? Uh, it's oh, it's that one guy. I know who it is. I know who it is. He's, he's in the Harry Potter, the Dumbledore, yeah, yeah, Dumbledore yeah, sort of thing. He's so good. He's really? so good. <laughs> he's funny too. Let's see. I'm looking at the cast right now. He plays a great Coppola. Matthew, oh no, Dan Fo- Fogler, Dan Fogler. Fogler. Yeah, yeah. How's I recommend that show. I, it's not like it has its flaws for sure, mm-hmm. but uh, fascinating that a lot of it is true. Like, oh, I bet it was like ninety percent of it is like based in true mm-hmm. fact. There's like, you know, it's a TV show, mm-hmm. so they got to do like some stuff to like keep it a little more interesting, I guess. But it was fantastic. I like it. That's great. Yeah, every time I always think about it, I'm like telling my mom, I'm like, we gotta watch this. Vincent always telling mm-hmm. so it, it, it'll be watched eventually. Eventually. It's good. Um, okay, well that's it for the news. Anything you've been watching, anything you've been cooking through? Cook. Trying to pull up the old letterbox. But yeah, I watched a little bit of Rebels. Um, of course I'm watching uh Succession and movie wise, I watched three movies this week. I watched Weathering with You. To get ready for Suzume in two weeks, which I'm very excited about. Huh? Uh, weathering with you is <laughs> nice. Uh, oh my goodness! The director is Makoto Shinkai, who did Your Name, which is one of my favorite oh, movies. Yeah. Also, uh, he his new one is called Suzume. It released at a Berlin Film Festival and it took top the top spot over all the live action movies, which is crazy. Wow! Um, very excited. Uh, to you know to get you excited it's about this girl that's in love with a guy that turns into a chair so uh, it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be <laughs> super great. Yeah. oh my god that's amazing weathering with you is about this guy that's in love with a girl that can change the weather in tokyo it's epic it's oh, so it's tokyo's cool. in an eternal rain and she <laughs> makes the sun come out and so she sells herself to people to like 
oh, it's it's my wedding. Like, can you come and make it sunny like during my wedding and oh, like things like what? that. That's but so it's really creative. sweet. It's such a sweet movie. And it's dude, uh, animated. It. Yeah. Oh, um, so cool. And the voices in it mm -hmm. uh, of in Weathering with You. It stars. Um, we watched the English dub because it's in. Uh, it was on HBO Max, uh -huh. um, but Who the knows? cast was so good, dude. It was um, Allison Brie, Riz Ahmed. Oh, uh, like it was just really great. Dang, yeah, yeah. that's wild. That's really cool. And then I watched uh, Murder Mystery Two. I don't really have a lot of words <laughs> for that, except it was really unfunny. Some parts were funny. I had a couple good laughs, but yeah. Besides that, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is this is. I was debating, did I waste my time or not? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I was doing other things while watching it, and I yeah. felt like that was the perfect. I was like, ah, I'm happy doing that. Like, it's a good background. That's good. What was funny for me, I think, was I was watching with both my parents, so they were kind of giving their, they were laughing and kind of talking about, yeah. oh, that would never happen, or blah, blah. So that was the only funny thing about it. I think if I watched yeah. it by myself, I would hate it. But it was a little, yeah, it I was just it. a little bit enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a little bit enjoyable. Um, um it's not it's not like the worst thing that ever graced earth or anything it's just uh, not good it's yeah just yeah silly yeah uh -huh. you know what's funny some that you would just that just made me think of what we both said um at the same time and i'm like oh are we falling into the the you know, the podcaster tropes where they're you know those videos you know, of those when guys? i talk about this i want to talk about this yeah, we talk about like, yeah. <laughs> you know they go let's just mention, um yeah yeah yeah, yeah let's, let's go ahead and talk about yeah yeah and we both yeah we kind of <laughs> it's like oh no are we fall into the podcaster kind of I don't know. Um, I, just was I watched Sorry. one more Japanese animation. Okay. I watched uh, The Wind Rises by Hayao Miyazaki, which is a Studio oh. Ghibli movie uh, that Damn. came out in 2013. This was supposed to be the movie that he retired to. Um, and then he came out of retirement right after this movie to do more movies. But um, I thought it was fascinating. And this mm -hmm. is about a Japanese aviation engineer, Jiro Horikoshi, who uh, made a bunch of World War II planes. Wow. Uh, and so it's kind of a biography, but also Studio Ghibli-fied, where it's mystical, baby. Yeah. And beautiful. And I, just like, you sink into the couch, and you just listen to the soundscapes, and you're uh -huh. like, this animation is so nice. Everything is so nice. I really admire that you are into all these films. You know what I mean? Like, this taste. Like, I, you know, I don't know that many people that are into it. I mean, I know there's a lot of it's people. I'm saying in my life, you're the you know, only one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I, that you're, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. It makes me. It makes uh -huh. me that because it's good stuff. I know it's really good stuff. It's not. It's Weathering like with some you is good. Mm -hmm. I I like it, but the wind rises was like on the next level yeah. of like the animation's better in Weathering with you, sure, because mm -hmm. it's like a newer film. But the wind rises is like the emotional. I don't everything about it. It's it's Ghibli, dude. It's Miyazaki. He's just that's, he's a master. Oh Nobody's <laughs> nobody can beat him. It's so good, and that's on HBO Max as well. Okay. Okay. I, I, it's on my mind too, you know, like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know why it's hard for me to pull the trigger. I don't, it's just, yeah. I mean, it's a mood thing too. If I wasn't in the mood, thing. I wouldn't have probably enjoyed right. it as much. Okay. It was crazy. It's like, it's like, you know, lazy sat Sunday uh, uh, sort of thing. I was like doing things all morning, running errands, running errands, mm -hmm. came back. I was like, time to watch the wind rises with Brandon. We just lay on the couch yeah. and just, it's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a good time. Um, let's see. So I saw Grand Budapest Hotel. That one was really great to kind of, you know run back through it's one of my favorite movies ever oh yeah it's really i i was surprised because my memory of the story was completely different than what it was and so i enjoyed that one that's uh seven i put it gave it a seven out of ten i rewatched the thing we watched the new thing the new one i, I think it's so Ooh. cool and I've it's never a prequel seen the new one. it's a prequel to the to the old one from 82 yeah. it's about the crew that they go find yeah right? dude it's Which sick because really cool. they recreate i, I don't even want to i think they use the shots of the opening from the that's awesome. 82 thing for the ending of this one. And it's like, oh, that is so awesome, the connection. Um, right. But yeah, that, I, I think that's it. I'm, I'm trying. I feel like I'm watching a lot of movies. Oh, we rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think that's my dad's favorite movie of all time. So, I've only seen that movie <laughs> one time in the theaters. I, I, yeah. But I feel like every time it comes in a conversation now, people are like, it is the best movie. Like, it's Tarantino's best. It's this. It's this. And I have like... I thought it was good when I watched it, but I never left it being like, this is the greatest movie known to man. That sort of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's but yeah, people do it's hold it to that. I don't, it's not my favorite of his, but it's, I think it's his best <clears throat> in terms of directing. Because <sighs> it's just a lot of lingering, you know? You're just like 
why are we spending 30 minutes in one scene of of an hour because it's just like you're right. just there you're just hanging out with him and i'm like i, yeah. I respect that you're just kind of chilling <laughs> so sure it's great um but yeah that, that that's it just shows most of my time was spent in re4 with leon kennedy nice god i love leon kennedy anyways <clears throat> that's it beautiful well ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here for episode 105 of freeze frame uh, stay tuned. Please go on over to our YouTube channel and check out those interviews. Uh, we appreciate you audio yeah, listeners yeah. so, so much. And yeah, for real. We see the downloads and everything. It's awesome. If you could just, you know, those ratings and those reviews, super, super helpful. Thank you all. All right. That's it. Have a good one, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good week, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>